Hello there and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Casey and I design sewing patterns. I create a lot of sewing content here on this YouTube channel. And today I wanna to do a little Q and A. So the channel just hit 100,000 subscribers, which is extremely exciting for me personally. And I obviously could not have done it without you guys following me here and supporting the channel. So thank you so much for that. And anyway, today I'm gonna to answer some of your questions. I've kind of put out a couple of feelers for questions over the last couple of videos. You guys have sent me some really good ones. I've also had questions that have come up over the years that I'll address here as well. And I thought I could just kind of work on a few projects that I've had pending while I answer your questions. So I've got a few patterns in the works. This dress behind me is one of those. It's a bias cut dress. I worked on it over the weekend and I just need to hem it. So I'm gonna work on that and then I'll answer the first question. The first question is, did you go to fashion school? How did you take the leap to become a pattern designer? And how did you learn to draft patterns digitally? And the answer is no, I did not go to fashion school. I actually went to architecture school. When I was in high school, I actually thought I might go to fashion school. I was really considering it very seriously. So it's just kind of funny to me how I've kind of come back around to sort of a fashion design career in a sense. But I did learn how to sew at a pretty young age. I had a grandmother that sewed. So I had some very basic sewing skills. I would do things like alter my clothing that I bought at the store to fit me a little bit better. And so I was really comfortable doing those types of things for a really long time. So to answer the question of how I learned how to draft sewing patterns, I got a lot of books from the library looked up a lot of tutorials online, experimented with patterns that I already owned that I had bought. It really was kind of a progression from sewing other people's patterns to hacking those patterns to making my own patterns and then eventually selling them on my own website. So now I do that full time and I also host this YouTube channel. It's honestly like there are many days that I'm like, I can't believe I get to do this for a living. It's really a lot of fun. So with this dress, I don't know if you can see the bottom, it's kind of long and I actually want to hem it up just a little bit higher than that. So I think I'm gonna take about three inches and I'm just like literally pinching this and pulling it up and looking at what, how much of that distance I think I took up, which is about three inches. So I'm gonna take off three inches on this and do kind of a narrow hem all the way around the edge. I also wanted to hem this dress and I actually hacked this dress, this wrap dress pattern from my comfy tee and I have a video on that that I'll share. And I also have a pattern. I went ahead and just made a graded pattern for the dress if you are a Patreon member. It's just the pattern pieces, it's nothing else, but it's just kind of like a quickly hacked pattern to make that into a wrap dress. And I really like this dress, but I feel like I made it too long. So again, I just wanna bring it up above the knees. So I'll probably take off about five inches on this one. Since I'm in a hemming mood and I've already got black thread in my sewing machine, I'm gonna go ahead and do that too. Just go ahead and knock it out. This shirt was also actually made from that same wrap pattern, just FYI. Let's get to hemming and I'll answer another question. Kind of in the same vein of how did you get into pattern drafting? Someone had asked how I you know, made the leap from architecture to pattern drafting, and then also how my training in architecture helped me with pattern drafting. Analyzing how shapes go together, thinking about the construction process, a lot of project management, and my architecture training definitely prepared me for that in a really big way. One of the biggest sort of advantages to having a background in architecture is that I also had a lot of experience with drafting software, but I also learned how to create promotional materials using the Adobe suite of products like Adobe Photoshop and InDesign and Illustrator. I use Illustrator for both drafting the patterns and for illustrations, and then I use InDesign for the instructions, and then I use Photoshop obviously for the pictures and things like that that I put on my product listings. But I also think in general, architecture just helped me learn how to be a project manager and kind of juggle several design problems at once. And for that, I'm very grateful. And I actually wish that when I was in architecture school, I had had a little bit more of an awareness of that potential because I think I probably would have enjoyed architecture school a little bit more. It's possible that I would have like switched majors because I definitely, architecture was just not the right fit for me. I really did not enjoy it that much. I was definitely looking for something else to do pretty much from the time that I graduated college. I was like, okay, I gotta figure out, I gotta figure out my life here. Embarked on a series of creative businesses and creative endeavors. And then, like I said, I've started sewing clothing for myself, became really obsessed with it. And that's kind of how I ended up here. I've done a few videos where I've talked a little bit more about that kind of stuff. And also, you know, I've shared resources for things that I found really helpful for learning how to draft patterns. So I'll be sure to link all of that as well if you wanna check that stuff out. I'd like to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, Vivaya. Vivaya focuses on creating chic and sustainable footwear that is eco-friendly and responsible. All of the products are created using recycled materials and 3D printed technology. 
establishing a zero waste process to create a seamless 3D knitted design for the ultimate combination of comfort and function. Each pair of their shoes is the reincarnation of six plastic bottles that come from city waste and the ocean. And all of their packaging is created using 100% recycled materials. Now I had had my eye on Vivaya for a while and I had seen their ads popping up because I guess Google knows me that well. And I really liked their knee high boots especially. And I was like, uh, heck yeah, I want those boots. Those are mine. They have my name all over them. The thing that I like the most about the boots is that they fit really snug to the calf, but they're not uncomfortable. Their shoes feature a water repellent construction. Many of their shoes are also washable, machine washable, and they also dry really quickly. So in addition to just being a beautiful pair of shoes, they're also extremely practical. And because they're so easy to clean, you can have them around for a really long time. I've mentioned here on the channel before that I've been really into sewing dresses lately, and all of the shoes that I've picked, I think are gonna work well with some of the dresses that I've been making. So for the two dresses that I hem today, the black boots look great with both of those dresses. And I love the look of a short dress above the knees with a pair of knee high boots. I think it is such a classic look. And recently I've been needing a pair of like heels, some comfortable heels. So when I saw that they had these kind of block heel pumps on their website, I knew that those were exactly what I was looking for. I love that they have the two tone options. I think that's a really nice little detail to kind of elevate your look. And this particular style on the website is called the Running Heels Dooley Pro. And I think you're supposed to be able to like run in these shoes. And not that I plan to run in them, but they are actually quite comfortable. They come with a really nice thick block heel. They're very flexible and they have a nice insole. All of the shoes have really great insoles to make them extra comfortable. And I also really love these little booties, the Marcella boots that they sell. And I kind of stepped out of my comfort zone a little bit and went for a different color. I normally would go for black or brown, but I've been seeing a lot of this burgundy color popping up and I decided to go for it. I really love how these look with jeans and a blazer. I've thrifted a few great blazers recently and think that the brown and the black both look really nice with this burgundy color. I also love them with a long dress, like this green dress that I made for myself a few months ago. The burgundy and the green go so nicely together. Vivaya is also very kindly offering my viewers a 12% discount code. So if you enter KC12 at checkout, you can save 12% on your next order. You can learn more about Vivaya by going to their website, vivaya.com or to their Instagram at Vivaya underscore official. Thank you again to Vivaya for sponsoring this video. I love the shoes. I'm so excited to wear them and integrate them into my wardrobe. Okay, so I had every intention this week of working on cleaning out some of my clothing. I do need to go through and just like do an overhaul of all the things that I have. I need to get rid of some things. Anyway, I'm not doing that this week. I actually still want to work on some sewing projects. So that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I've got another pattern that I've been working on. I showed a little sneak peek of it in my last video as well. And that was kind of like a wearable muslin test. I've changed a few details about the pattern since then. So I'm going to work on that today and answer some more of your questions. So the next question, are you a one person business or do you have people helping you? It is currently just me. It's a one woman show here, but yes, I do all of the pattern drafting, the grading, you know, creating the booklets for the pattern, creating the pattern files, all of that. I do all of that. When I first started doing patterns, I did get some help with the grading initially, but now I just do all of that myself as well. And then someone asked, how do you test patterns and make sure that the grading works across multiple sizes? Well, first of all, there are kind of grading standards for how to grade patterns into multiple sizes, but they do need to be tested. And to do that, I have pattern testing. So I'll just bring on a group of people who love to sew garments and they will test the pattern for me. They'll give me feedback on everything from how the garment fits to the sizing, if it works out, to how the garment is constructed, whether or not the instructions make sense. Anything that they think could be done a little bit better, they'll let me know. It's also just a really nice way to have some fresh eyes on the project because I can miss things like type typos that they find a lot of typos, <laughs> mislabeled things or discrepancies with measurements, those types of things. So the testing is actually pretty important for getting a pattern out the door. Okay, so I've got this pattern here. I've already got it printed out. Whenever I'm getting a pattern ready, I always print it out on my home printer the same way that you would at home and test it out that way. So I've been doing several muslins of this particular pattern and I think I'm ready to make it out of some of my nicer fabric. So I have this linen. It's just like a really pretty kind of natural colored linen. This will be more of like a spring type dress that I'm working on. But yeah, I'm gonna make this shirt dress basically out of this linen and then I'll answer some more questions. So the next question is how do you organize your week? I identify with so many things you share, sewing, home decor, other creative pursuits, filming and editing for YouTube, travel, cooking, exercise, etc. Do you have planning tools that help? 
And the answer is I'm kind of a little bit all over the place when it comes to planning. But initially when I'm trying to organize my life, I just try to prioritize the things that matter the most to me. But whenever I'm feeling overwhelmed, it helps me to step back and say, okay, what is the most important thing to me right now? And put my focus there. That includes my downtime. I really enjoy having time to myself and having time when I don't have things scheduled and planned. So I make time for that as well. I have periods when I feel super motivated and I get so much done and then periods of time when I feel super unmotivated. And whenever I'm in either of those states of mind, I try to remind myself that that feeling is going to change. So if I'm feeling super motivated, I try to get as much done as I possibly can and kind of set myself up for success when I'm not feeling as motivated. And then when I'm not feeling as motivated, I can kind of lean on all of that hard work and maybe take it a little bit easier. And I also use those times when I'm not feeling as motivated to actually rest and take time for myself and try to do some project planning that doesn't feel as mentally exhausting, like making lists and brainstorming new ideas. So I've got all of my pattern pieces cut out here. I'm gonna work on pinning my darts. YouTube is another aspect of the things that I'm doing, you know, day to day and trying to create new content. And that actually can be extremely time consuming and exhausting. It helps a lot with the YouTube videos if I have a little bit of a plan. So sometimes I'll kind of create a script or I'll even just like list out the main things that I wanna be focusing on for each video. It just kind of helps add some structure to the filming process, which makes things go a little bit faster than just kind of going into it blind and not really knowing what I wanna be working on. And actually part of that question was, do I have any apps that I really like for helping myself stay organized? And I kind of switch it up every now and then. So I've been using the Notion app lately. I really like that one. That one's kind of been working for me. And um, it's really nice because I, I mean, I basically just make lists of everything. And I have like all these different pages in Notion that I can use for those lists. So that's been a really good one for me lately. And I also use my Google Calendar a lot. So especially all of my personal things I have going on, I put it in the Google Calendar and I refer to that quite often to help me stay on track and make sure that I'm not scheduling things that are gonna fall on top of other things like doctor's appointments or you know going to the dentist or even going to work out, making sure that I can kind of like weave all of those things together successfully without feeling super overwhelmed. And then I also have the notes app on my phone. I make notes constantly. So I make a lot of lists, everything that I think of from recipes and grocery lists to new content ideas for the YouTube channel and new pattern ideas. As soon as it pops in my head, I just pull out my phone or get on my computer and make a list. And then when it comes to fitting in personal things like working out or doing any other extracurricular activities, for example, I just started a ceramics class. I just, try to make the time for those things. Sometimes it can feel a little bit impossible to fit new things in. And what really helps me with that is to schedule it in advance. So I schedule it way out in advance and that way it's on the calendar and I feel kind of obligated to do it. Not obligated, but it's like, it's already in my schedule, you know? So it helps me to like plan in advance especially with working out. Like the gym that I work out with, you have to sign up for the classes. Like you can't just show up and join a class and the classes fill up kind of fast. So I'll usually schedule it out a week in advance or more just to make sure that I can get into the classes and having it on the schedule because there are many mornings when I wake up, I do not feel like going to work out, but I know that if I don't go to that class, I'll have to cancel and I'll lose one of the passes from my class pass. So that's kind of a little you know, trick that I do to myself to make sure that I'm getting into the gym and getting a workout in. When it comes to more personal like to do's like cooking dinner and all of that, um, I really actually enjoy cooking. So cooking is actually not a, a big thing for me. And I, I actually, after a long day of sewing, look forward to cooking a meal. It kind of relaxes me to cook. So I know not everybody's like that. And I know that cooking for some people can be kind of stressful, but I actually really enjoy cooking. So that's not something that I have a huge problem with. But if there are days where I don't feel like cooking, then you know we'll order food or eat leftovers or something. And with the ceramics class that I signed up for, I really, this year I've been really wanting to get out and just kind of do more things in our community. We've been in this area for a while now, over five, actually almost six years now. And um, I've just been feeling the urge to kind of get out and do more things socially. So that was part of the reason that I signed up for the ceramics class, just to kind of meet some people and do something else creative. I know that those things kind of fill my cup and make me feel great. So I just, I just make the time for my plan in advance. Okay, so I have gotten this mostly put together. I will have a sleeve option for this particular pattern that I'm working on, um, but I really like how the collar is turning out. I think it's gonna be really nice. I have some finishing details to do. I'll probably do those off camera. I kind of just wanted to get this to a point where I could try it on and test out a few things with the finishing. So another question that comes up 
kind of a lot in the comments and not just as a question but also as kind of something that holds people back from moving forward on their projects is how do I find inspiration for what to sew next when I have so many ideas? For me, I kind of prioritize it by the season and the thing that I'm most excited to work on. If I have multiple things that I'm excited to work on, I may just start several projects at once. I'll cut some things out. I'll do a few little details here and there on different projects. And I do kind of bounce around between projects sometimes, kind of like I've done in this video where I'll do a little bit on one thing, I'll bounce to another thing because that just kind of keeps me interested and keeps it fun and exciting for me. But I kind of just trust my gut and go for it. And I also don't put too much pressure on myself to finish a project in one sitting. I think that helps a lot actually, now that I'm saying it out loud. It's kind of like starting to exercise or starting some other habit. It's like the goal should be just to get started and to just do one thing. So that, I think that's probably my best advice. Just do one thing, do one thing, do just a few minutes. And to answer the question of how I find inspiration for what to sew next, I mean, inspiration comes from all angles for me. So it can be when I'm out shopping, I see things that I like and I wanna to try to make it. Um, I really enjoy going shopping and checking out the details of different garments that are on the racks seeing how they're finished and getting ideas from how things are styled. I'll go to some of my favorite websites. Like I really love Anthropology because they, I feel like Anthropology has a lot of like really classic pieces that are styled in really interesting ways. I also use Pinterest a lot. So I'm always on this computer <laughs> looking at Pinterest almost every single day. I have multiple boards full of different ideas for garments. So I definitely collect inspiration on a regular basis. And that is something that I really enjoy doing. I have had people before say things like, well, you just assume that everybody's on Pinterest and that's, you know, I don't want to use Pinterest. You don't have to use Pinterest. Whatever feels most natural to you is what I suggest using. Um, but yeah, I get inspiration constantly <laughs> on a daily basis. I'm constantly seeing things I want to make and I have ideas for things, way more things than I could probably realistically make in a year or in a few years or maybe even in a lifetime, I don't know. But I do enjoy gathering inspiration a lot. And another question I got is how do you get past the fear of making mistakes? And I see this a lot in the comments of people saying things along the lines of like, oh man, I really wanna start making things, but I'm not as skilled as you are, or I worry that I'm gonna mess up. It's really hard for me to just cut into the fabric. I was trying to think, when do I usually feel fearful when I'm starting a project and I really don't have a lot of that fear. But I think when I first started, I probably did. And I think, I think I've just kind of gotten past that because I do it so much now that I, I have confidence that even if something does happen, that's a mistake, I'll figure out a way to troubleshoot it and work it out and make it right. Or maybe it won't work out, but it's okay. It's just a piece of clothing. Part of what makes me enjoy being creative so much is that it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I think that's kind of my mindset going into everything. I'm just here to learn something. And a lot of times mistakes become learning opportunities too. I know that sounds really cliche and like I'm trying to make this into a teachable moment, but it is the truth. It just comes with practice and also not holding yourself to such a high standard of perfection because perfection is, you know, kind of boring and actually unachievable. So anyway, I embrace the mistakes. And in the same vein of finding inspiration, someone asked, how do I decide on the color palettes for my garments? This is kind of an ongoing process for me. I feel like I see things that I really like and I've learned over time that some of those things don't really suit me personally. Either it's the color palette or the pattern on the fabric. You know, once I make the garment and start wearing it, maybe it doesn't feel something that feels right when I'm wearing it out in public. I'd say that I've definitely toned down the color palettes in my wardrobe over the years because I do tend to go toward more neutral color palettes, but I also kind of know generally what colors I feel the best in. And I've never had my colors done or anything like that. I just kind of go off of intuition. But it's something that I keep in mind too when I'm shopping for fabric and you know when I'm just shopping in general because it is easy to see things that look beautiful on the rack that you know over time I've learned okay it's kind of like figuring out my brand style. I kind of know like this particular thing even though it's beautiful even though I really like it I know I probably won't wear it because it doesn't fit my brand as much. It doesn't feel as natural to me so. I don't know if that really helps or not, but that's just kind of my personal approach to it. And I also got a question about how much ease to add to a garment. So like, how do you know how much ease to add to a garment? And that's kind of, there are standards. Like in some of the pattern making books, you'll find those standards for kind of generally how much ease to add to garments. For me personally, I feel best when I have at least two inches of ease in the bust. With the waist, it really depends on the garment, but like this dress probably has about 
don't know, probably about two inches of ease in the waist as well. I could probably go a little bit tighter because with the waist, I feel like anywhere between zero to two inches is usually pretty comfortable depending on the garment. And then in the hips, especially, I find that at least four inches of ease in like a skirt like this is really nice. Um, and that's kind of like for a dress, you know, a, a semi-fitted dress. And it also depends on the type of fabric you have. So with woven fabrics, you're going to want a little bit more ease. Woven non-stretch fabrics, because those are not going to stretch to kind of accommodate your body in different positions. But with stretch fabrics, a lot of times you'll have either zero or negative ease. So it just varies by the fabric and the type of project and how you want it to fit. But again, that's something that comes with a lot of practice and kind of figuring out what you like. I still will try to like make my skirts tighter. And then I'm always like, I gotta remember that four inch rule, you know? And then with a more gathered skirt that's a little more flowy, in general, I would say that probably one and a half times the circumference of your hips or your waist is a good rule of thumb for like a gathered skirt. Those are just off the top of my head. But if you get some books and resources, which I'll link some videos down below where I've talked about those, a lot of those will kind of share some general rules of thumb for having ease in your garments. You can also study patterns that you have and see what their ease is in the pattern. So if they share their finished garment measurements, you can compare that to your measurements or the measurements on the size chart and see kind of generally how much more ease they're gonna give you. So, you know, there's several different sources where you can get that kind of information, but it also kind of comes down to personal preference as well. Okay, I thought I might wrap up this video with a sort of lightning round of questions and answers. I get a lot of questions from people who are new to the PDF pattern format and are used to like hard copy paper patterns about how to buy, download, and print the PDF patterns. And I have a video on that here. I've also gotten questions and comments about the best way to shop and find good fabric. I have a video on that here. And in general, I get a lot of not only questions, but people commenting about starting to sew if they're new to sewing or maybe they haven't sewn in a really long time and they want to get back into it. And I have videos on that here and here and they just go into my kind of tips and strategies for getting started sewing your own clothing. And this kind of ties into that, but I do get a, a few comments from time to time from people who will say things like, wow, you make it look so easy. Like, why do you make it look so easy? It's really hard. Can I really do this? Can a beginner actually do this? I think that really comes down to your mindset and I'm gonna have to give you some tough love here, but you're gonna have to just suck it up and try it, okay? It's easy for me because I've been doing it for so long and when I say easy, I don't mean that it doesn't require effort and patience and perseverance on my part. Those are parts of the creative process that I actually really enjoy. I like problem solving and so sewing really kind of scratches that itch for me. And when people ask me things like, can a beginner actually do this? Well, I don't know. It depends on the kind of beginner you are. I think if you do want to try sewing, you should definitely go for it. I also get a lot of questions about the color of my sewing room walls. They were painted that color when we moved in and I found that it is the color Mountain Stream. And I'll put an image of it here, but I'll also link it down in the description for you to go check it out if you want to get that paint color. A few people have asked what kind of dog Huxley is. He is a Shih Tzu, we think. He was rescued from the Humane Society and he's just been the most amazing dog. He is about 11 years old now. He's getting a little older and he has a few little health issues here and there. He kind of worries us sometimes to be totally honest, but he is the best little buddy ever. He is so sweet. He's amazing. And um, I don't know how he got so lucky. He, he's an awesome dog. I got a few questions about my skincare routine and I actually filmed a little skincare routine and kind of get ready with me makeup video <laughs> the other day, but the lighting was so horrible. And I was like, wow, I'm really not a beauty guru. Like it, it I didn't really want to share it here. So there are a couple of channels that I've gotten some decent skincare advice from. I'll put them here on the screen and I'll also link them down below. People also wanted to know about my workout routine. I've been working out for a couple of years now, pretty consistently. I found a great gym that I really love. And my workouts basically consist of three, sometimes four days a week of strength and conditioning training. I try to lift really, really heavy. It's supposed to be really good for not only building muscle mass, but improving your bone density. And I looked up one time, like, what is the best kind of exercise for longevity and weightlifting was definitely at the top of the list. Someone asked, how did I end up in Michigan? I am originally from Mississippi. I'm a Southern gal and I met my husband who is from Michigan in Mississippi. He was there getting his master's and I followed him across the country to Reno, Nevada, where he was getting his PhD. And then we eventually moved here to Michigan 
where a lot of his family is located. And the last question, I kind of debated whether or not I was going to answer this question, but I did get the question a couple of times, do you plan to have children? And some people were just curious because I have mentioned my age. No, we do not have kids currently. We've actually tried for several years and it has been really tough. We've tried with and without fertility and medical assistance, but we have reached a point where we are accepting the possibility that it may not happen for us. Also the possibility that it could still happen. <laughs> so we're kind of living in two potential futures at once. I, I do feel very blessed to have a lot of support in this area of our lives. I have an amazing husband. We've been going through this together and I'm just really grateful that he's my person <laughs> to go through this with. We have an amazing family who supports us and doesn't put any pressure on us in this area, which is extremely helpful. We've had some great doctors that have educated us on this whole process and have, you know, worked with us to try to make it happen, even though we've been unsuccessful so far. And I have a therapist. I go to therapy on a regular basis and get a lot of emotional support through therapy. I think there are a lot of misconceptions around infertility and, you know, treatments and procedures that would, that people think just work all the time. And I'm telling you from experience that they don't always work and it's really frustrating. I'm also a very resilient and positive person and it's hard for me to kind of stay down down in the dumps about things that you know it's like I'm doing the best that I can you know I, I hesitated to share it but at the same time I think it's helpful to share it because I know that a lot of people go through this and it is something that feels really vulnerable to share but you know obviously it's not something that I, I really want the strangers on the internet to be giving me a lot of feedback on so that's why I really haven't shared much about it even though it's been an enormous part of our lives over the last several years so that is where we are with that. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching the videos and for getting us to 100K here on the channel. I'm very excited about that. I think I think I might get one of those like little YouTube plaques. Um, I'm not sure what the process is for, for how long it takes to get one of those. Um, so that'll be kind of fun to get one of those. Anyway, looking forward to sharing lots of new stuff with you guys over the next year and beyond. And thank you again for being here. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did and you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe. Hit the little bell icon that way you'll be notified when I release new videos in the future. And um, yeah, I think I will see you in the next video. Bye.